Okay, so in this video we'll be covering moving averages, the two that I use, and pivots. So let's start with the moving averages. Now, as I mentioned, I have the 50 exponential moving average and the 14 exponential moving average. Uh, I just happen to have a, co a colored indicator here for the 50, which is my main one really, and um, it just is colored based on price either being above or below it. So again, I'll make that available at myeffectsource.com and make these indicators available to you. Uh, a template as well. So starting with the moving averages. Now you may have heard of moving average crossover systems. For example, a crossover here. This is not what it is. Uh, that would be a short signal on a crossover. And you can look at, see at that point when it crossed over, it was too late. Uh, so you already missed the move. Now, so we're not using it like that at all. It's support resistance. So you have sort of a floating uh, average price of support resistance here. Um, in very strong trends, like we're seeing here, the 14 EMA, some use the 20, which is going to look similar, of course, on the chart. They're not too different. Uh, I do like the exponential moving averages better than the others. Uh, strong trends, the 14 is going to act as support. And going forward, the 14 is going to, be sort of a checkpoint for you as you're doing your analysis. Again, if we're seeing an uptrend here and price is starting to pull back, that's sort of the first checkpoint where uh, seeing the price behavior at that level is what we're looking at. And knowing that that may uh, attract buyers and it may become a support. That's a very strong trend. So we have that level going forward. And again, we see you know, all the stuff in recent examples. This is the pound dollar current chart. Uh, and again, acting as support as price moves up in this very strong trend. Uh, for example, now, using what we were talking about with support resistance in our zones and everything. So this is our obvious zone like we went over. And here you can see a break test continuation pattern. You can see this confluence in this general area that price is testing the 14 EMA and also a previous resistance turned support. So there's a couple of reasons confluence here where you can understand why buyers may already be attracted. Um, so without getting into looking for a trade setup here yet, we're just talking about using the tools together. So again, 14, and it's not the most common thing that I'm looking at. Again, it's mainly a checkpoint for me, this 14. Uh, if I'm looking for a no supply, a low volume test, they'll often do that. You can see on low volume, it drops down low volume here. Uh, low volume test for sellers during an uptrend. So we have our uptrend occurring. We have price being marked up by professionals. And for whatever reason at this point, maybe due to past levels that we had that marked up, uh, they're testing for sellers. And we pull back. We see that low volume test. It doesn't retrace. And I, I want to point out here, talking about a low volume test, it doesn't retrace all the way to the 50 fib. Just to get an idea, our 14 EMA is going to be far away from our fib zone. In strong trends, it's going to be far away from your 50. It was a very early checkpoint again. And uh, that's typically where if, if buyers are very aggressively buying, we, we can see them come in and also combine with the lack of selling we see here. So that's the stuff we'll get into. But the main point is seeing this as support resistance. Again, here is a strong trend and an opportunity to sell off of lack of demand. And we see a no demand signal here. Uh, by definition, that's the VSA stuff we'll get into. But again, you see, I'm just working in the VSA stuff so I'm not, you don't get overloaded it, with it. Um, and you'll see the logic behind it. So again, we see this volume, low volume pattern here is what I'm highlighting on the test of the 14 uh, EMA. And at that point where it's signifying a lack of buying in this downtrend, which in turn tends to continue the trend. And we're talking about balances of, of supply and demand to introduce that idea. So low volume uh, test for buyers is saying a lack of demand. Demand and buyers, same thing. But supply and demand is more of a you know market terms and VSA terms. So you know we have some terminology that we take from here and there. Um, so again, just pointing out the typical behavior. Uh, you see, you know, this is a one-hour chart, and again, you see the support of the 14 EMA. Typically, uh, again, once that 14 EMA is broken. And here you see volume start to increase, right, on the test of the 14 EMA. And we see that it got broken, and that led to 
well, that's so much further, but it led to it testing the 50 EMA, and that's a very typical pattern as well. You can see there's no candle close below this 14 EMA until here, and then off it goes. So again, it's like that checkpoint. All right. So let's look at the 50 EMA. That's what that is here. And it's the same thing where we're looking at support resistance. I'm sure you can already see what's happening there. Again, one hour chart. And you can use these moving averages on other time frames. That's the good thing about it. Um, you know, it looks like I, I used two, two moving averages, but when you think about it, if you go through different time frames, you're actually getting, right, your, your moving averages are different from one time frame to the next, right? Uh, and so you end up with uh, these sort of are, are like the golden moving averages, if, if I could use a dramatic name. Uh, going through the different time frames, you'll see that they'll still do this job of acting as support resistance and these little checkpoints sort of and seeing price action like, like you would treat support resistance or FIB zones. So uh, areas to really watch that reaction for you know, potentially a, a bounce or a break. Um, so you can go to uh, you know the four hour chart and your 50 EMA you know is going to you'll end up with a uh, 200 moving average just because one hour one times four right uh, so 50 times uh, four is 200 so you end up you know that moving average change that you see when you change time frames actually gives you some other very popular and useful moving averages that's the point that's why it works on multiple time frames. <clears throat> Uh, and I experimented with practically all of them, and, and this is what I ended up with. Uh, you can see, you know, again, the recent accuracy here. Now, during trending moves is what I'm talking about. If we're if we're in a ranging condition, let's say going forward here uh, into this week, here we are Monday, that price is ranging, right? We come test the support, and then we, you know, bounce off that support, we come back to the high, you know, so we can start to see ranging conditions along with volume is, is helpful in predicting a range, which is something we'll get into. Uh, obviously, at that point, uh, the moving averages are not going to act as support resistance like they are in trends. So it's when our analysis in general is telling us we're in a trending move, and we expect that trend to continue, uh, particularly including volume with that, then then we'll expect that to possibly be a, a point of support resistance, you know, along with our other analysis. So during trending environments. Um, so we can just scroll back and see all these examples, you know, of the 50 EMA acting as resistance and support. Uh, it very rarely is, is a meaningless thing when you're seeing it test uh, the 50 EMA on a one-hour chart, and you can really see and uh, get some good insight there. You know, here's an example of uh, we weren't exactly trending in the background. Oh, well, higher highs. <laughs> uh, just to combine a little quick example here, where there was a fib retracement with extremely high volume, the candle rejecting in price action and closing back at the high, and also a break, and once you're above it here, you see the consistent bouncing in this 14 and 50 EMA combination. Uh, so you have a few things in here that may attract buyers, and seeing the increase in activity, along with the price rejection, uh, reveals to us that there was large buying in this area. And something like that would have you expect uh, this resistance to break and uh, for it to attempt uh, an uptrend, particularly if we have accumulation and strength in the background. Uh, that stuff we'll get into. Uh, but here's an example. I like the idea of just working in the idea of VSA and not just throwing it all at you at once. Um, here's, a, again, you know, we talked about these support resistance areas, double bottom, fake breakout pattern, right? And the high volume of the day was off the low price. That says a lot as far as showing that buyers have accumulated through here. As others were selling, they were a step ahead in, in creating and uh, building up their long positions. Uh, and as we move out, up off of that area the next day, uh, we see, you know, a setup as far as a FIB uh, and, and this. So going along with our background, knowing that there was buying down here, and they're still in these positions until we see weakness, you know, which is sort of the opposite of this. We'll get into that. Uh, so knowing that those, those professionals are positioned long here and going into this day, and then seeing them aggressively buy here in an area of confluence, technical confluence, uh, 1450 uh, FIB volume, 
uh, and we also aren't seeing pivots for this day. So, you know, this could have been, it looks like it could have been daily pivot as well. So we're going to talk about pivots. So there's a lot of confluence comes together. Those are the high probability moves that I'm talking about. Uh, and and we'll, we'll get more into detail about exact entry, and stop loss placement, and all that stuff. Um, so I do like to highlight the fact that, you know, uh, these tools work together as I go through them. Here's a retracement, of course, after an up move, making a new slightly higher high, but, but you know, we are above this. It's green, just in case we're not aware. It's coming back to test, and there's, you know, just again to highlight the support resistance. You have the 14 and 50, so you have sort of a little zone in there where you're saying, okay, our buyer's going to step in here or not. Uh, this is sort of late in the day to get into a trade, but, uh, yeah, that's the idea. So 14 and uh, 50 EMA. All right, so let's get into pivots. And again, you know, just real quickly, here's uh, different time frames. Again, 50 EMA and 14 here acting as support. Again here, 50 EMA acting as support. During trends, there it is support. There it is broken, tested, continued, acting as resistance from that point, right? All right, so just to show you, and, you know, smaller time frames, you'll see the same thing. We have a little 50 EMA uh, holding up the price uh, today. 15 and 14 on retracement, right? So nothing cherry-picked here. This is all going on right now. All right, so pivots. Not going to take too long here. So, again, make sure your pivots are correct, as I explained in the setup video. Uh, they're simple support resistance levels, and we use them as confluence. So, again, now that we have started to identify support resistance, FIBS, the 50 EMA, 14 EMA as support resistance, uh, we have another point of confluence, with this, which is the daily pivots. So you can see where you can get some very high probability, which is the pivots in general. You can get a very high probability combining these tools. It doesn't mean they all have to be there, but they're going to really communicate to the probability of the setup. Uh, so the daily pivot is a very strong support resistance. So, for example, if it pulls back here, we may see some activity. We have some confluence here now with the moving averages, right? So the daily pivot. Uh, that may or may not attract buyers uh, based on what we see happen there. Get more into the volume stuff. Uh, I also like R2 and S2. Uh, often S1 and R2 uh, and R1, you see, it's hard to see there, but it's just daily S1, R1. Uh, very often you'll see more, I think, statistically speaking, S2 and R2 are, will reject price more. They will act as support resistance. Here's R2. And S2. Sometimes the R1 and, and S1 are going to be, you know, if it's a small range the previous day, like after this, like a small range day, you'll have R1 and S1 sort of close together. So if it's really going to have a healthy range for the day, uh, you're probably going to break that R1 and S1 as, as support resistance. R2, S2, I do like those as, again, point of confluence on the setup. If price came down here, uh, you know, and I saw high volume strength coming in, a proper VSA setup, but along with it being uh, an S2, maybe it's below any recent support, and there's not much we can find back there, particularly those pivots will be helpful. Um, so uh, I do like to see at least one point of confluence along with my VSA entry. So I can have volume and price action telling me to get into a trade, but if that S2 is there, that recent support, the FIB zone, other things will go over trend lines, uh, I always like that support. So at least one thing I like to see there, uh, particularly if you're moving into new ground and there's no support or anything, those pivots can really help you. You know, what's down there? You know, what, if we're having a, you know, a meltdown, you know, where may we find a bounce, uh, you know, maybe here. So uh, those pivots are really helpful for that. Get your bearings. Um, and, you know, sometimes they'll group together. You have the monthly pivot, the weekly pivot, and, and the daily S1, you know, all together, you know, grouped together in a small price range. That obviously becomes a very strong uh, point of support resistance and uh, an opportunity to look to trade if, if you know some other things agree. I, obviously, VSA at the least. Uh, so that's really all I wanted to cover. I think this was uh, pretty thorough, and we'll move on.